Hello and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. I've been spending a lot of time at home lately. I've been mostly playing games on my RG350, but wouldn't it be great to play on a large screen TV? You know, maybe involve my family. That'd be pretty cool. The arcade experience that you had, you know, playing games like Miss Pac-Man or Street Fighter 2. Maybe even playing a console game like the Intellivision or Nintendo 64 or even SNES. In this video, we'll set up the Vilros Raspberry Pi 4 Retro Gaming Kit to do that and much more. Let's get started. So what all comes with the kit? It's got a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B with 2 gigs of RAM, two Vilros USB SNES style gamepads, a 5 foot HDMI to micro HDMI cable, NES style case, a 32 gig micro SD card with noobs preloaded, an SD card adapter, an 8 gigabyte flash drive, Vilros Raspberry Pi 4 power supply with an on off switch, which is cool. Heat sinks, a quick start guide, and a Magpie Retro Gaming Quick Start Guide. Alright, so let's unbox the Vilros Raspberry Pi 4 kit. It looks like this one was kind of opened already, but eh, no biggie. Yeah, we'll start out with the Raspberry Pi 4 B, Model B, 2 gigs of RAM. There's the case. That's what we'll put the Raspberry Pi into. And this is the power supply with an on-off switch. And yes, it's USB-C at 5.1 volts, 3 amps. And here is the two controllers. Two classic USB game controllers. These are SNES style. And of course we have the HDMI cable that's going to go into your TV. And the other end into your Raspberry Pi 4B. All right, next we have the heat sinks, and we will apply those shortly. And in this package, uh, we've got a micro SD reader. And there's the micro SD card. Very cool. And then here we have the USB thumb drive. So if you want to transfer files that way, you can. And a happy or not happy card. Oh no, I love these stickers. <laughs> All right, so here's the book. We're not gonna look through the entire thing here, but it has some good background information, so I highly recommend taking a look at it. And some detailed information as far as how to put the heat sinks on, but we're gonna cover that in just a minute. All right, so in here you have the Raspberry Pi Retro Gaming book, and this covers Noobs, Laka, and RetroArt, which personally, I, I prefer something else. I prefer RetroPie. Uh, so I'm going to show you an alternative to using what's discussed in this book. But we'll also cover it briefly. Alright, so let's open this stuff up. Alright, so let's now assemble the kit. We'll start out with this. The NES style case for the Raspberry Pi 4. We'll go ahead and take a look. It's a nice looking case. Over here on the back, this is where your micro SD card will go, right here. Alright, I'm hearing something rattling. I guess we should open it up. Aha! Uh -huh. Here we have a fan. You have a red, a positive, and a ground wire. Which we'll hook up in just a moment. And a little screwdriver. Very cool. And some screws. Nice. And this card explains exactly where the black and the red wires go on the GPIO header pins. Now we'll open the Raspberry Pi 4 itself. Be sure and check out the links in the description below. I'll have all kinds of information available for you there. On the far left you have two USB 2.0 ports, two USB 3.0 ports, gigabit ethernet, and here are your GPIO header pins. This is where we're going to connect the fan. This is the display port and camera port. 
And on the opposite side, we have the USB-C. This is for your power, and these are your two HDMI connections, and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. So yeah, that's the Raspberry Pi 4. Next, we need to install the heat sinks. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. You can see the four different sizes up here. The larger one fits right here. If I can center it, sorta. And then this elongated heat sink goes right here. And the other two go on the other two chips to the right. And these heat sinks are the same size from what I could tell, so it doesn't matter which one you put where as long as it's the two smaller ones. So keep that in mind. And I highly recommend that you use one of these. It's a ground strap. That'll help protect your Raspberry Pi 4 when you're installing heat sinks or doing anything with the board itself. Static electricity can be bad. All right, so I'm going to peel off the adhesive and I'm going to start on these smaller chips on the far right just because it's kind of a tight fit in there and I want to put those in first. It seems to make the most sense to me to work your way right to left here. So now we'll apply the other heat sink right here. And you want to give it a nice little firm press after you install the heat sink. Make sure that the adhesive sticks firmly to the chips. And now we'll do the same here to the memory chip. And to the CPU. Like so. Give it a nice little press. And that's it. The heat sinks have been installed. Very cool. May not be perfect alignment, but it's good enough for me. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to install the ground wire on the GPIO header pin. So we're going to count out seven pins and drop it right into the seventh pin. Like so. And now we'll install the red or the positive end to the pin here at the front on the very far left. There we go. Now we'll install the Raspberry Pi 4 into the NES style case. Line up the holes just right and then we'll put the bottom cover on. Make sure everything's lined up. And then we will install the screws. So here just gonna drop the screws in there in the hole and then we'll just Tighten it down with the screwdriver they gave us. And it's a decent little screwdriver. Nothing special about it. But you do want to make sure everything is tightened up pretty firmly so there's no gaps on the side of the case. And there's the access to the USB 2.0 and 3.0 ports and Ethernet. And the side. That all looks good. Here's where our micro SD will go. So, speaking of which, let's go ahead and pop in the micro SD card. This card has noobs pre installed, so we're going to go ahead and use it. You can go with a higher capacity if you prefer. And keep in mind, you can try out different images with different SD cards. You just pop them in. All right, so now let's go ahead and unbox the power supply because we need to go ahead and plug the power up to our Raspberry Pi 4. There's our USB-C in, and we're going to go ahead and plug that into the USB-C port on the far left here, like so. And I'm going to make sure that this switch is off, because I don't want to inadvertently power on the unit. Now we'll plug in the micro HDMI port right beside the USB-C power, like so. And now we're going to move on to the USB game controllers. Now these controllers are pretty good for most games. There are some systems that may require analog sticks, so keep that in mind. But I think for most of the stuff, especially like classic retro games, these are going to be just fine. Uh, some consoles, again, you may need analog controls. Alright, so we're going to take this and plug it into the USB 2.0 port. The buttons feel pretty good. I can't exactly compare it to a real SNES controller because I don't have it anymore, but uh, yeah, they, they feel good. Not too bad. Now I'm going to plug in the official Raspberry Pi 
USB keyboard and mouse, but keep in mind any USB keyboard or mouse should work just fine. You don't have to go out and purchase this one, but if you are interested, I will put links down below so you can check it out. Alright, so we got it plugged into the USB 2.0 port. Let's power it on and move on to our next step. All right, so now everything's hooked up and powered on. Let's go ahead and check it out. The micro SD card that came with the device has noobs pre-installed, so that's what's booting here. And we're gonna go ahead and connect up to our Wi-Fi network. So I'm gonna select my network and enter my password. After doing that, you'll have a list of all the operating systems that you can install. And we're gonna select Laka Raspberry Pi 4 and then click install. And then once you click install, you'll see this dialog that says it will overwrite anything that's already on the card. Again, be sure to check out the link below. I'll have more helpful information available to you there. This process took quite a while. I sped it up a hundred times and uh, yeah, it still takes a little while at a hundred times. Once it's done, just click on Laka and press enter or double click and reboot. Now we're running Laka, and of course this is RetroArch. And the first thing we need to do here is set up our controllers. So we're going to go into the settings here and move down to port 1 binds. And then we're going to go down to bind all. And basically we're just going to map all the buttons to the controller. So we're going to press B, Y, select, start, and then the up, down, left, right and then the a x and then the left bumper and the right bumper now the rest of them we'll just let those time out here we don't need those because we don't have those buttons next we need to set up the wi-fi so we'll move down to wi-fi press a on the controller and select our network and then we'll enter our passcode now after we do that we are now connected to our network and we'll switch over to the PC and type backslash backslash Laka, press enter. And now we are on the device itself and we can go to ROMs and go to 2600. In this case, I had already created the 2600 folder, so I'm just going to paste those two files in. And now we're going to switch over. You want to scan the directory, and once you do that, you'll see your list of games. Of course, I added a few more. And we'll go ahead and run Berserk. What we installed here is what was described in the book that came with the device. But let's move on to something a little more interesting. Before we jump into Supreme RetroPie, I want to show you something very important. I've set up a web page specific to Raspberry Pi 4 Gaming, and it's located right here at this URL. It's wagnerstechtalk.com forward slash rpi4gaming. And if you go to that page, you will find some helpful resources that go along with this video, as well as additional information that I may not have known at the time I made the video. So you definitely want to check this place out and get all the latest information here. You'll also find details on the various types of kits that are available, as well as detailed how-to information. So yeah, definitely check it out. And as you may or may not know, at the time of this video, the RetroPie team has not yet officially launched an image of RetroPie for the Raspberry Pi 4B. But, have no fear. Supreme RetroPie has a pretty impressive build, and that's what we're going to take a look at now. If you scroll down to the important links, you'll find their Facebook group page where you can go check out the latest and greatest information from the Supreme team. Highly recommend checking it out. If you click on over to the announcement section over here on the left hand bar, you can find information about new releases, new images, as well as some helpful videos. So yes, definitely check out their Facebook page. Okay, so let's go ahead and start the download here. I'm going to click download and it's going to launch a torrent and you want to use a torrent client to download the image which at the present time is about 16 gigabytes in size so anyway yep go to this page check it out 
All right, so once you've downloaded your image, we'll go to Etcher and we'll select the image. We'll highlight the IMG file and click the open button. Now we'll select the target. I'm using a 128 gig micro SD card. I highly recommend using a card that size, maybe even larger, depending on your needs. After it's burned, it'll fill up a 32 gig, so you definitely want to go higher. Now we're going to insert it into the Raspberry Pi 4 kit and turn on the unit. How's that for a pretty awesome intro? <laughs> yeah, this is a great image. Alright, so now we're going to fire up Emulation Station. It does all this automatically. And the first thing you'll want to do is set up your controller. So I'm going to hold down the button and I'm going to press up, down, left, right, start, select, A, B, X, Y, left shoulder, right shoulder. And then from this point on, I'm just going to hold down the button for all these other buttons that we don't have on this controller until we get the hotkey enable and we hit select. Then I'm just going to press A on OK and we are now in the image. I'm going to scroll down to options and from there we will go down to raspy config and the next thing we need to do is set up our Wi-Fi using our keyboard we'll select network options enter a host name yours will be RetroPie. I changed mine to Vilros and then we're going to go down to Wi-Fi and I'm going to enter my SSID and password and then tab out to OK and we are now connected so now let's transfer some games. So we'll switch over to slash slash RetroPie is what yours will be called. Uh, mine, again, I changed it to Vilros, so I'm going to type slash slash Vilros and press enter. And now I can go to the ROMs directory just like we did earlier and copy and paste my ROMs. Then after you restart Emulation Station, you can start playing. We covered a lot of ground in this video, didn't we? <laughs> we covered how to set up the Bill Rose Raspberry Pi 4 Retro Gaming Kit, how to fully assemble it, and then we went over some basics of how to get two different images set up and running, copy some games, and get to playing. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like button. If you want to see more from Wagner's Tech Talk, please click the subscribe. And with that, I shall talk to you very soon.